Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, I'm gonna introduce you to a Dallas restaurant legend. Jack Givens is in studio. You may not know his name, but you certainly know his concepts. That's just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team and the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, Dallas is a tough town. It's a very fickle town when it comes to restaurants. We've all had this experience where you wait for a year to try and to get into a restaurant because it's so popular, and then a few months later, it's closed. So to have concepts that last uh, over time is really a feat. And to talk about that today, Jack Gibbons, he is the CEO of FB Society, uh, formerly called Front Burner, and you certainly know their concepts. Uh, Jack, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, it's good to be here today, and um, you know, I think uh, Dallas is actually thriving as a restaurant city. I think, uh, you know, it didn't always have the best reputation for that, but uh, it's really come on, and I think over the next couple of years, it's going to continue to grow as a place to, you know, where some of the best restaurants in the country and, and a thriving environment that the consumer really uh, cares about, you know, what they're putting in their body, where they're eating, where they're sharing memories and things like that. Yeah, I want the viewer to get to know your journey. So uh, you uh, didn't start your career with uh, FB Society. Tell us about your journey. Yeah, no, FB Society is actually the second job I've ever had. The first job I ever had was with the Pappas family. And so uh, I had started as a, a waiter and kind of moved up in that company and ended up working for them for 25 years. I worked at the first Papacitos in Houston, uh, the first Papado, and, and helped grow that company to 34 units before I left. Okay, so then you joined Front Burner in 2008? Yeah, 2008, which was not a really great year, right? But it turned out to be like a really tipping point for us because uh, although 2008 was a very difficult time in the economy and uh, lots of restaurants closing down, what we had is we had a brand called Twin Peaks and it was the right brand at the right time. So as the real estate market was really crashing, uh, we really upgraded from C locations to A locations and, and it launched a brand for us where we, you know, when I started with, uh, in 2008 with Front Burner, we had about four units open and when I, about, um, you know, eight years later, we were up to 80. So uh, it was a real growth story and a really uh, a, a, a time that that brand was what people wanted. Wow, and about that same time, you're also launching other brands. So we're gonna put up on the screen your website. Uh, th th those are just iconic brands, everybody loves them. Yeah, I mean, we're really proud of them. And um, what's, what's also up there, is not up there, is um, other brands that, that we've created um, such that some of them are, uh, have been successful, like Velvet Taco is, is growing across the country. Uh, Ojos Locos is another you know really niche brand that's really growing as well. and then. Other ones that we opened, like The Keeper in Plano and uh, Red Dog Right in South Lake, aren't on there because they're not open anymore. So, uh, you know, just like any entrepreneur, some things work and some things don't. You were telling me right before we went on camera that it's surreal to be in another state and, you know, drive by one of your restaurants. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's just interesting. Last night I had dinner with some friends um, in Addison. And on my way home, I, I drove by a Velvet Taco, an Ida Claire, a Whiskey Cake, uh, 60 Vines, a Twin Peaks. And it just was like, wow, you know, it just, uh, when, when I think back over the last few years, it's been a bit of a blur. Um, but I have such an awesome team um, and have worked with such talented individuals. Um, it's actually been quite an exciting ride, thrilling ride, actually. 
One of the things I know you don't take for granted is that so many special occasions happen at your restaurants. I mean, think about how many marriage proposals have happened at your restaurant. They yeah. do, people become very attached to brands, don't they? They do, and even internally, our staff, I can't tell you, we call them whiskey babies because how many couples met at Whiskey Cake, actually employees, and ended up having babies. Yes. And, uh, you know, so uh, we've had um, a lot of that. We don't take it for granted at all because our mission at, at FB Society is to really create experiences never imagined. And, and if, if we can create those type of experiences in those environments, uh, what we think is we really create a place where families would want to celebrate their most important occasions, uh, you know, loved ones would want to be in this environment together, uh, friends and family would always want to find a reason to go back to it. Yes, and my wife, you know well, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. was the head of marketing for um, uh, Legacy West, and, sh and she was there when you were opening some of those concepts, including Haywire. I want to put some video up on the screen. If you haven't been to Haywire, you need to. And I want you to kind of walk through that, Jack. Uh, when you were imagining Haywire, uh, how did you come up with the concept? You, you guys actually have like a, a camper up on the roof, don't you? We do. We have an Airstream trailer, and we actually have uh, tents um, that are inspired from Marfa. Texas so that was the inspiration of the rooftop and so inspiration is a great word because we're always thinking about um, and, and so my worldly travels of where I go and what I see I like to bring a lot of those ideas back to Dallas and so um, and places that I've seen that inspired me and, and the rooftop of Haywire was inspired by by Marfa and a visit there where I actually there's TPs there's cigars there's just the ultimate experience to relax and because we're right next to the box garden at legacy hall you can actually look over and watch the live music at the same time wow you know i've, I've never had a, a bad meal at any of your concepts and i'm wondering um the company's gotten so large not every employee knows you or recognizes you do you ever play undercover boss and eat at one of your restaurants just to see how, how the service and food is? Yeah, I don't really do it in an in a undercover boss kind of way. I think I just do it as a normal customer. Like, and I think about value, I think about service, and, I, and the one thing about uh, our group being so many restaurants clustered in DFW, we have family, friends, that if anybody has a bad meal, they're gonna call me. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I, I know kind of just because we're such a small group and we you know, are just so connected to uh, you know, friends and family and they're not afraid to call me and say, hey, you better get over to this restaurant. You get some issues, you know? Okay, another concept that is wildly popular, 60 Vines. Who hasn't gone to a 60 Vines? Uh, tell us about that concept and, and how it, it evolved. It really evolved because my business partner had a, a real, uh, you know, feeling about keg wine and sustainability. And, uh, you know, it's funny, people don't see Texas as always the most sustainable state. But, you know, in one of our things that we've always done is do those type of things as much as we can. On um, When we opened Whiskey Cake, for example, we have um, um, solar panels on the roof. Nobody saw them, but it was kind of the mission of what we wanted to accomplish. We always take our landscaping, the water, channel it into our, our landscaping. We try to have as many electric car sta uh, charging stations. So 60 Vines felt like something that really was on brand for us because of the whole mission of sustainability with keg wine. Also in every brand we create, we try to have a kind of a secret weapon, something that's different and unique. And keg wine is, is really, it's, it's, it has um, less fal false fates in it. It's, it can be really procured in a unique way. And not everybody has these wines on keg. So it really gives us the ability that even for the guests, they can get different levels of pours. And so it was a really differentiated model. And you know we opened uh, the first one in Plano and the second one at the Crescent, which is really a unique. You know, usually people open in urban areas and move out to the burbs. Our, we tend to do it the opposite way. We, we open in the burbs and then go to urban areas. And so um, we've got five of them open uh, today. Um, Nashville, uh, Winter Park, Florida, um, Houston, and we're actually in the process. We've got Lisa signed um, in Orlando, Boca Raton, um, you know, the Woodlands, uh, Charlotte, uh, Reston, Virginia, Washington, D.C. So there's going to be quite a few of these opening. 
Wow. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask a uh, uh, selfish question because yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a new entrepreneur. I've only been doing yeah. this for 14 years. Uh, I've never opened locations in other cities because I'm such an excellence freak that I need it right here where I can look at it. Um, how do you sleep at night? Do you sleep like a baby? Yeah, I mean, I think um, what, I, what the hard lessons that I learned was um, over-invest in more talented people than yourself. If, if you do try to do everything yourself, um, for me, I feel like I limit my freedom, right? So, and I really value my freedom. So the way I get more freedom is um, try to hire people better at me than any function. And the more I can do that and the more, you know, that's kind of a, you know, a pillar of our company. Uh, what it does is no matter what level you are, if you're always trying to have, you know, bring up people around you that are better than you, it can give you the opportunity to move up. Wow. Do you still get nervous before opening a new concept? I mean, you're... <laughs> I, I really don't. You don't? You no, know, no. I, I, I think, if anything, um, it, it's like uh, the more work I put into the front end of it, the more confident I am. So I, when we do create a brand, we go narrow and deep. We put a lot of the tenets on paper. We think through it. We work really hard in the front end so that ideally, if you do that, the execution of it is not as... There's not as many loose ends that pop up at the last minute. Sure, and I know you're um, you're often called on to speak on panels. We've got some video from about a month ago. You said this was Santa Barbara. Yeah, I, I speak on panels um, fairly frequently, just in the in the restaurant side of uh, the business because uh, you know we're we're a unique group because there's not a lot of groups in the country that actually create brands. You know, there's a lot of big companies that that grow brands and you know create chains and things like that. We're kind of starters, not finishers, you know, mm -hmm. so that's kind of where, you know, we're really focused on the early incubation of a brand. And you were telling me before we went on that you guys are also now investing in other companies and, and water projects? Yeah, like we in uh, Richard's Rainwater is a, a, a small company out of Austin where um, they're creating this really cool, sustainable water program. We've invested in um, things that just are kind of on the periphery of our company where it might be. Uh, restaurant technology, uh, we love uh, this idea of anything new like that's disruptive. Like um, Spiritless is a kind of a, a new company that creates um, alcohol that doesn't, <laughs> alcoholic products that don't have alcohol, it's actually removed from them. So wow. um, things like that. And then helping on advisory boards of other restaurant groups and helping, uh, you know, kind of young restaurant or hospitality entrepreneurs start up brands and grow them. And, uh, how to navigate their way through that. What advice would you give to a young you? You know, I, I think it would be get started earlier. Um, you know, I, I did spend uh, 25 years helping to grow, you know, a, a, a really interesting company like Pappas. But um, I, I think if anything, I, I wish I would have um, invested and had more confidence in myself at a younger age to get started earlier. Wow. Jack, you've been an amazing guest. Thanks for coming on the show. We're going to end with the website, which is fb-society.com. The great Jack Gibbons. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.